Hey guys, so the word of the day is acceleration. I've alluded to this in a couple of the previous videos. Today we're going to dig a little bit more into what exactly we mean in physics when we use the word acceleration. I'm also going to address some other things like you may have heard the word deceleration before. We're not going to use that word too much. We're going to focus on this one right here, acceleration. All right. Now acceleration, the actual definition of the word acceleration is any change in velocity. Now remember, velocity is a vector. It has a magnitude, a value, and it has a direction. So when we say a change in velocity, we could be talking about speeding up. That's usually how people use the word acceleration is your velocity, the magnitude of your velocity is increasing. That's speeding up. Acceleration is also slowing down. Slowing down is a change in velocity. So even if you're slowing down, we're still going to define that as acceleration. All right. Now, the other thing that usually gets people, remember velocity is a vector. I have mentioned that already. So magnitude and direction. If the direction of your velocity changes, that's a change in velocity. Even if your speed is staying the same, even if the magnitude is staying the same, I'm still going five meters a second, but I'm changing my direction. That is acceleration. Acceleration is any change in velocity. Now, this can be used in simple questions to calculate an average change. Okay, the formula that we'll usually use for average acceleration is the change in velocity over the change in time. Now, that can be used in a situation where you have a beginning speed and an ending speed and you know how much time it took, and you can use that to find acceleration. Here, let me get an example. All right, Renat is running a race. She starts a rest. Three seconds after the start, after the gun goes and she starts running, she's now running at eight meters per second. What is the magnitude of her acceleration? Now, remember, magnitude is just the value. So that means all it's looking for here is the number, the value of the acceleration. We don't need a direction, okay? Acceleration is a vector. We should normally have both magnitude and, and, and uh, direction, but here it's just asking for the magnitude, the value, okay? So we said earlier we can get acceleration by doing the change of velocity over change of time. So we can do that right here. We will do acceleration equals, now change in velocity, would be your final velocity minus your initial velocity. All right, that's how you do a change. Anytime you see this change, whether it be in physics or chemistry or math, it always means the final minus the initial. When you saw this for slope delta y, it was y2 minus y1. It's always the final minus the initial. So the final velocity is eight meters a second. That's how fast she's going after the three seconds. So we'll go eight minus the initial velocity, which in this case, it says she starts at rest. So we'll put zero divided by the amount of time that it took to get from that zero to the F. Okay, so that would be the three seconds here. So we work that out. We'll get eight minus zero, which is eight divided by three. And our final answer will be two point 6666 repeating, so I'm going to just go 2.7 meters per second squared. Now, remember the units on the top were in meters per second, and the units on the bottom were in seconds, so I'm taking that meters per second and dividing by another seconds, which is why the units for acceleration are meters per second squared. There's two seconds, two, two sets of seconds down there. All right. So there you go. That's a pretty straightforward example of how we can use this formula, this definition of acceleration to calculate an average acceleration from some velocities. All right. Um, let's take some time. We talked about the velocity time graphs a little bit in the previous video, but I know it was pretty quick and pretty succinct. So we're going to take a little bit more time to talk about it now and how it connects to acceleration. All right. So let's see if we can figure out what's going on in this picture. So the first thing is we start with a velocity of two meters a second. It increases to four. 
which means we've got some acceleration there, right? It's increasing in speed. Right here, not at rest, but the velocity stays the same. The velocity is four meters per second. And then it starts going down like this. Okay, now this is a negative. I don't know if you remember, but in the previous video, we said that acceleration is the slope of the velocity versus time graph. So here we have a positive slope, which means we would have a positive acceleration. And we could calculate that, right? We could get some points. We could do the y2, the y1 over x2 minus x1 and use this formula essentially to be able to calculate the acceleration there. We could do that. Right here, because it's flat, the velocity is not changing. So we're not at rest, but the acceleration is zero because for this time right here, there's no change in the acceleration. Now, from here until the end, you can tell we have a negative slope. The graph is going down. Because that's a negative slope, that would be a negative acceleration. Now, again, I could go through, I could label some points, I could get the value, I could get the magnitude, okay? I trust that you can find a slope, and so I'm not gonna go through that right now, what I would like to talk about is conceptually what's happening here, because this is important. When we say positive acceleration, negative acceleration, that just gives us a direction, all right? So here, we had a positive velocity, and the velocity was getting more positive, right? It was getting bigger. Now, because it went from positive to being more positive, it makes sense that that was a positive acceleration, all right? Here, we have a very positive velocity. A positive velocity just means we're moving to the right, generally. Usually, positive is either to the right, or if we're talking about up and down, positive could be going up, all right? So right here, it's a very high positive velocity. Let's just say we're moving to the right. It means we're moving really fast in that direction. And as time progresses, what's happening? The velocity is decreasing. Okay, I'm still, I still have a positive velocity, which means I'm still moving to the right, but the magnitude of that velocity, the value of that velocity is getting slower and slower and slower until this point right here where the velocity equals zero. Now, in that case, it should kind of make sense that if I go from a positive number to zero, then I had a negative acceleration. Now, this is the part that usually gets people. Because after this, what happens after this point? Now we start getting negative velocities. But I can't slow down anymore. I'm already at rest, right? I'm at rest here at V equals zero. So what happens is the line goes beneath. Well, I'm going negative one meter per second. That means I'm now going one meter per second in the negative direction to the left. So now I'm going one meter a second in this direction. And then a little bit later, I'm going negative two meters a second. So that means I'm still going this way, but now I'm going two meters a second. I'm going a little faster now, right? And as time progresses, I'm actually going faster and faster and faster, beginning more and more negative. Remember, the negative is just the direction, all right? So even though I'm going from zero meters a second down to, let's say, negative three meters a second, which is going to be a negative velocity. That means I'm speeding up. My acceleration is still negative. And that's what usually has people get caught up. Negative acceleration. Why is it negative? Because the velocity is becoming more negative. The velocity was zero. If I said it was a positive acceleration, that should mean the velocity is increasing, that I'm getting a positive velocity. I don't want to say that. So it's really important that you recognize that a negative acceleration could just mean that you're getting more and more negative, which is still speeding up, still speeding up, but it's in the negative direction. All right. Now, one thing you could notice is that when the velocity and the acceleration have the same sign, then it's speeding up, right? That's what happened here. I had a positive velocity, positive acceleration, and I was speeding up. Same thing here. When I had a negative velocity and a negative acceleration, I was speeding up. My velocity was getting bigger and bigger and bigger, just in the negative direction. In the situation where I had a positive velocity 
at a negative acceleration, I was slowing down. So when your velocity and acceleration have opposite signs, you're going to slow down because the acceleration is the direction opposite. That should make sense, right? I'm moving this way. If my acceleration is the same direction, it's going to push me more and more. I'm going to go faster. But if I'm moving this way and the acceleration is that way, I'm still moving this way. I can't just all of a sudden, ah, I'm flying back this way. It doesn't work, right? If I'm moving this way already, the acceleration can be pushing that way and I can slow down. But then once I start going this way, then the acceleration and my motion are in the same direction. I can now speed up. All right. So that's kind of an introduction there to acceleration for us. It connects it to a lot of the things that we've talked about, connects it to that idea of the velocity versus time graphs. Remember, we can get this slope there. Um, and then, of course, the idea of the definition of acceleration being the change in velocity. All right. So I hope that's been helpful for you. And uh, if not, send me a message, let me know, and I'm glad to help clear things up in another way if, if that would be helpful. All right, see you next time.